Alrighty, we just finished up our second week. Let's jump on the scales and see how you guys did. This is Kara, 289. All right, got some standing in sixth place, down 0.4 pounds, 0.19%, Mrs. Sam. Fifth place, down 2.9 pounds, 1.64%, Beth. Fourth place, down 4.4 pounds, 2.21%, Stephanie. Third place, down 4.6 pounds, 2.38%, Christina. Second place, down 7.6 pounds, 2.56% Karen. And in first place, down 11 pounds in the past two weeks. 5.12% Cliff. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, what? 11 pounds in two weeks? It's amazing. Stephanie's dog's even excited for you. <laughs> he she just got up and started like <laughs> awesome job on uh, new decades this week uh karen is in the 280s busted into a new decade karen congratulations and christina you busted into the 180s this week congratulations uh several of you guys knocking on new decades doors which is super awesome and super exciting so congratulations and great job uh, now, the thing that we are going to talk about this week, and this is something that no matter, I believe that most human beings struggle with this thing from time to time. And anybody who has a weight issue, I think it's a 99.999999 repeating that they struggle with this thing. And it's this thing we call emotional eating. Emotional eating. And emotional eating is when we use food to self-medicate an emotional moment. And it can be any emotion. And one of the things that I've learned through processing, not only processing this with myself, but through coaching clients through this, is it can be all different emotions. Uh, and so when you think about emotional eating, most of the time people just say, well, I'm an emotional eater. I just eat when I'm emotional. And what really happens is every emotion probably doesn't trigger you, but all of us have emotional triggers that when this thing happens, we are triggered. It's like if you have a gun, you pull the trigger, the, the bullet comes out, right? So for you, this thing happens, your trigger gets pulled and the bullet doesn't come out, but you go, you want to go eat. You want to go. And most of us have, most of us learn this behavior from the time we were little. So if you think about different emotions, for a lot of us, when this when we were little, this started when we did something, when we did something good. We had an AR and our an A on our report card, or we won our little league game, or we our parents so often, at least I know mine did, it was like, oh, you did good, let's go get pizza, or oh, you did good, you won your game, let's go get ice cream. Or you didn't do good, you lost your game, you're not getting ice cream. Anyone ever had this one? If you don't finish all your dinner, there's no dessert. So we were made to stuff ourselves, eat, eat things when we weren't full to get more food. So, so much so that so many adults, when they're sitting, they were overeat and overstuff themselves because they had this guilty feeling about not finishing all their food on their plate. I'll tell you, uh, when I had that revelation, that's not what we do with our kids. Uh, my kids eat till they're full. I don't overstuff their plates. I give them a, a, a an okay amount of food, but I don't overstuff their plates. I'd rather them get seconds. And if they they stop when they're full, 
but I don't throw it away because kids learn how to manipulate very easily. So when they, uh, you know, all of a sudden my four-year-old's like, mom, I'm full. My belly's full. Can I have ice cream <laughs> two minutes later? So no, it's like, okay, you're, that's fine that you're full. Stop eating. Good job stopping. But then I put aside what's on their plate and they eat that at their next meal. So they still learn to stop when they're full. They're never made to eat past they're full, but they also can't use it to manipulate me. Does that make sense? So like my daughter, we had burgers last night with those healthy buns I showed you guys. She only ate part of her burger. That was fine. I didn't make her finish it. But guess what she had for lunch today? Her burger. I made my other two kids lunch and she had her leftover burger. It wasn't a punishment. It was, oh, you didn't finish this last night. But how many of us were made to finish our food? So we developed this bad habit of finishing our food, right? Uh, another thing we... Uh, we maybe learned from our parents was if our parents had a stressful day, at least my mom, she would have a stressful day. She'd be like, oh my gosh, work was horrible. We're getting pizza. Life is chaotic. We're getting pizza. So I learned that when this emotion of busy, when this stress emotion happens, we go get pizza. We go get fast food. We get takeout. We, uh, so think about all the different emotions that can cause people to eat. The two obviously obvious ones are happy. Anyone eat when you're happy? Celebration! Something good happens and you're like, what can we celebrate with? Wine, beer, mimosa, rosé all day, pizza, chalupas, tacos, margaritas, chili con queso, right? Like all the things, like give me all the things. So uh, popcorn, whatever it is. So there's this whole happy and then there's also the sad emotion. You're sad, you're you're and you any anybody a sad eater? You eat when you're sad too. Yeah, me too. I got both of them. <laughs> so I was just screwed, right? I eat when I'm happy and when I'm sad. Uh angry. Angry is an emotion. Uh people are angry when I'm when I'm um I have a lot of the emotions you'll find out. I had a, I had a lot of them. When I'm angry, it was like cleaning and eating. <laughs> I'm going to scrub something. I'm going to eat something. I'm going to scrub something and give me my Snickers. So when I was angry, right? Uh, for me, one of mine that I never would have guessed was lonely. So there was a season, uh, my husband and I always traveled together. And then we decided it was a really good idea to start having kids. And, you know, you just can't travel the same way when you're within so much of having the child. You got to stay put. And then after you pop out the child, it's pretty responsible to stay put for a couple months. And uh, so there'd be times where my husband would be traveling and I would find myself sitting there alone at night with the baby and I would just be lonely. I would just eat and, you know, all the things. So lonely, uh, angry, mad, stressed. Stress can be a trigger. So when we get stressed, anyone stressed? Like when you get stressed, you're not hungry, but you just eat. <laughs> so it's figuring out, okay, what triggers me to eat? Do you know uh, success can actually be a trigger? Success can be a trigger. You have a good day at work. You make a lot of money. You got a bonus. You got a really big tip. You got a raise. You got, So having success can be a trigger. Actually in weight loss as well. Because sometimes there's a saying that says the worst thing about success is a little bit. So sometimes we can lose five or 10 pounds and all of a sudden it's like, hey, I lost five pounds. I lost 11 pounds. I can have that cookie. I've been good. I deserve it. Mondays on this program can be a trigger because we just stepped on the scale. We just weighed in. And if I just have this little bit thing, Carmen won't know when I got all week before I got to weigh in again. Yeah, I'm going to lose it and some. She won't know. None of her business anyway. <laughs> right? So Mondays can be a trigger. And so what happens is we blame emotional eating. Uh, celebrations can be a trigger. Birthday celebrations, holidays can be a trigger. When I looked at actually going through, I thought it was going to take me 18 months to lose all my weight. It took me 13, but I had calculated 18 based on two pounds a week. And so when I thought about going through a year and a half of birthdays and celebrations, there was a part of me that was like, oh my gosh, wow, I'm going to miss like all these, some of these holidays twice, I'm not going to eat my favorite things. And it was like, Carmen, you better get like, you better get a grip on things. And it, so, and it was such a blessing because 
everything in my life had become so much around food. Birthdays, outings, girls' nights, Galentine's, Valentine's, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And what it forced me to do is it forced me to actually make the holidays and the celebrations about so much more. We have such cool Christmas traditions today that are based on so much more than food. It doesn't mean we don't enjoy good food. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But we have so many more things that have meaning because it's not just around. It's not just based on food. Uh, late night, nighttime for some of you is a trigger. Some of you can be good all day long. And then nine o'clock rolls around and your inner Barbara comes. <laughs> she comes knocking on the door. <laughs> right she my inner barber tried to come out last night she's like hey there's two pieces of lemon cake in the refrigerator i told barbara to shut the hell up she was she was uh bored not hungry <laughs> so so what happens is so often people try to change the trigger they try to eliminate the emotion to eliminate the trigger friend are we ever going to get rid of frustration Unless you create your own planet and you move there with no other humans, frustration is in your future. <laughs> okay. Can we all agree on that? So it's not trying to change being frustrated. And this is what most people do. I can't get frustrated. I can't get frustrated. Don't frustrate me. Like we want to eliminate the frustration. That's not going to happen versus changing the way we deal with it. Real realizing we're going to get triggered by frustration. So the next time frustration happens, I know frustration is a trigger for me. Here's how I normally react. How will I choose to react moving forward? So it was the same thing uh, for being happy. I hope more good things happen to me. I hope I'm happy. I hope I get, you know, things that are worth celebrating in my life. So normally I want to go eat. Normally I want to get ice cream. Normally I want to get takeout. Normally I want to go out to dinner. These are all my old triggers for when I was happy. What will I do next time I'm happy? Okay. What will I do next time I'm lonely? What will I do when I get triggered by this emotion? So number one, it's recognizing what are your biggest triggers when it comes to emotions? What emotions, what things, is it work? Is it your boss? Is it your spouse? And by the way, it doesn't make you a bad wife if your spouse can trigger you. I love my husband to death and we have an amazing marriage. In fact, I don't know anybody on the planet who has a better marriage, in my opinion, than we do. We've worked very hard to get there and we weren't always there. Uh, back in 2010, we literally were knocking on divorces, doorsteps, sleeping in separate bedrooms. But my point is, just because I love him doesn't mean he can't trigger me. He's another human being. <laughs> that makes sense. So it doesn't make you a bad human being if your spouse can trigger you. If it doesn't make you a bad person, if you get triggered, it makes you human. And so it's not trying to deny what your triggers are. It's realizing what they are. It doesn't make you a bad mother if your kids can trigger you. My kids are homeschooled and I love them to death. And I'm so thankful that we homeschool because we travel so much. And when I say homeschool, by the way, I don't teach them. Like we have an academy, they watch the video, but I'm still the, like, I have to check the papers. And for instance, today, like their math papers, they have to, when they get a wrong problem, it gets erased and they have to keep doing it. Well, today with my daughter, we're on the eighth time of me checking it and erasing things. And it was like, I was feeling myself getting triggered up the fourth time. And we went all the way to eight times. Simple mistakes, her trying to rush. So it was like, okay, I'm not going to put my kids in a school. We like the flexibility the homeschool gives us. So I have to figure out, so am I probably going to be triggered again and be frustrated again? Probably so. So what am I going to do when this happens? So recognizing the trigger, how do I normally react? I eat. I want to drink. I want to binge. I want to do whatever. I want to eat a bunch of food at one time. I want to, you know, all those things. That's how I currently react. And by the way, by the way, just recognizing those two things is extremely powerful. You cannot, when something is kept, and so often we try to hide these things. We try to act like they're not there. We try to act like, no, I'm not addicted to food. No, I don't struggle with this. No, I don't struggle with that. That's a bunch of bull honky. Like we didn't get overweight because we had all these perfect, amazing habits, right? And so there's so, when, when we don't shine light in there on what has been controlling us, it, it still controls us. It's when we shine light in there and we get rid of pride, we get rid of ego, we get rid of shame. And we're like, no, I, this triggers me. That triggers me. Here's how I normally act. doesn't mean we got to be proud of it. 
doesn't mean I'm asking you to go post it on Instagram or Facebook, but it's you recognizing, okay, yeah, no, here's how I normally react. And when you simply go in there and you shine light on it and you recognize it and you verbalize it, it already loses some of its grip on you. It already loses its power. So it's like, okay, what is my trigger? And so tonight you guys have already probably thought of some, but as this next week goes on and you start looking for these, you're going to see them popping up all over the place. You're going to see, you're going to find something that happens and all of a sudden you're going to want to go eat something and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, wow. Uh, driving was a big one for me. Driving in a car was a huge trigger for me. Shopping was a trigger for me. Going shopping, because whenever we went shopping, I would get food. Road trips were a trigger for me. Holy moly, did we have crappy food on road trips. Road trips were like a permission to eat junk. <laughs> At least in my car. <laughs> so, uh, so then the third step is recognizing what the trigger is. How do we respond when this happens? And the third thing is, how will I respond moving forward? How will I respond moving forward? So when I get frustrated with my kids, okay, I have three of them. Am I going to get frustrated again? Yeah, obviously. So what will I do if I get frustrated with my kids? Well, and instead of going in the kitchen and eating, I had a couple. Our driveway is a third of a mile one way. So I'm going to take a walk down the driveway. Or I'm going to go sit with 30 ounces of water on the front porch and I'm going to drink my water and then I'm going to come back in. Those were my two things that I did instead of eating. So when I get frustrated with my kids, I'm going to go sit on my front porch with 30 ounces of water and I'm going to drink it. Something about drinking cold water by myself, just naturally like, oh, Or taking a walk down my driveway. By the time I walked two thirds of a mile, I was like, I was cooled down. I no longer want to. If you just step away from the moment, uh, for me, when I was out to dinner, whenever I was out to dinner and I felt triggered by social pressure, it was removing myself and just going to the restroom. And here's the thing. What works for me, going outside and drinking a bottle of water might not work for you, but it's what works for me. If my husband ticks me off, going upstairs and taking a shower and using a salt or sugar scrub. <laughs> I know it sounds so crazy, but when I use a salt or sugar scrub or a shower steamer uh, in the in the shower, like it just totally resets me. I'm like, okay, I'm good. I don't, I mean, I put my hair up. I don't wash my hair. I just put it up on top of my head. I get in there with my shower steamer and I like, and then I get out and I'm like, okay, I love him. <laughs> Does that make sense? So removing myself from the moment, not, so number one, recognizing what are my triggers? Number two, what do I normally do when this happens? Number three, what will I choose to do next time? So if you work outside the home or inside of the home and you have a trigger that happens uh, at work, you're not going to get rid of your boss. You're not going to get rid of your coworker. So what will you do when this happens the next time at work? Here's, here's your question tonight, okay? Your question tonight is what right now off of everything we just talked about, would you say is your biggest trigger? What do you normally do when it happens? Like what's your go-to? Are you a snacker? Are you a meal? Or what is your, and how will you deal with it next time it happens? Thank you. Carmen, I can't pick just one emotion. Every one of those emotions triggers me and has triggered me. Um, uh, I'll pick one. Boredom. I'll pick boredom. Um, and I find that when I'm bored, especially, I think I'm hungry, especially if I'm around food. And so... When bored and there's food around, typically I will eat it. And it's not a meal, it's snacks, it's snacking. 
Um, I actually experienced that over this past weekend and it took me a while to figure out what to do. And I did it two days in a row, both times. It took me a while to figure it out. And that was to remove myself from the situation. So, um, the first night I went away from the room where all the food was completely. And so I was successful. I drank water. I realized I wasn't hungry. The second day I walked. Um, and that's how I dealt with it. And so I will continue with all the emotions as I'm aware, um, noticing them, listing them, listing them and then noticing them. Those are the, my two go-tos that I'm going to try to incorporate hopefully sooner moving forward. Hi guys. Um, <clears throat> I want to make sure I'm not on pause. Um, I would say my biggest trigger trigger is, um, stress at work and it's combination. It's stress at work because I work in healthcare and I see a lot of crazy things all the time. Um, but it's also like the social, social stress. So people are always bringing in snacks and cookies and all the things and it's really hard to resist. Um, so one of the things um, I can do is drink water, like, just like you talked about, um, taking a walk um, or just like removing myself from the situation because it's everywhere and the smells get me and seeing other people eating gets me. So um, I think those are the three things that I can do. Um, drink water, remove myself, take a walk. For me, definitely being sad and disappointed triggers me really bad. Like the way in this morning, I was so upset. For dinner, I almost started like just grabbing the food for the kids. And I was like throwing spaghetti and then I was putting the red sauce and I was like, I don't care. I don't care. And then I stopped and I was like, I won't do this. But I almost did it. It was like really close. So um, for me, it's going to be tea and run away really far, I think. So I actually had a trigger this past week now that we're talking about it. And that is my knees. Because in the past, like any time that I would start to get work out and I would start to like build that momentum and get going, I would injure my knees. And so I would just stop and be like, well, there it goes again. Like, why do I even try? Like every time I work out, this is what happens. But this past week, I just, I had to modify quite a few of the exercises and change them, but I still continued to work through it and still work the 30 minutes. So that was my, that's my trigger that I was able to move forward from last week you're up okay just had a something come up didn't know the message so <clears throat> um I would say my biggest emotion um is definitely well <laughs> all of them right all of them for sure um uh definitely being too busy is a big trigger um because of the domino effect that it has in my reaction to pretty much everything, which is I'm too busy to do this, or I'm too busy to do that. And then I just shoot from the hip. Um, I just go with the flow. Um, don't have the plan, have the intentions and the the right frame of mind. And I feel like during the week, like I've, I feel like, oh, I'm like, on plan doing you know everything I got to do for work or for everybody and then like by Fridays and the weekends so the weekends are definitely a trigger the weekends are just like ah let loose and just relax and have fun and to growing up as you talked about everything is related to food and drinking and so or drinking you know just food and drinking is related to literally every part of my life um, so the best way that I can, um, that I have been working on responding to these situations, um, is, you know, 
I, I do like to soak in the bathtub to relax when it's like a home situation. So if the triggers are within the home, you know, definitely go and, and create that calmness. Um, slow my mind down. Stop, you know, calm myself down. Think about like what I'm actually thinking about <laughs> and whether it's right or wrong. Um, and then also remembering like, how I felt, you know, like the pain that I was going through prior to, you know, where I'm at right now and will be in the future. So just remembering like how much anxiety it was giving me the way that I was feeling. So, um, and you know, I, the biggest, biggest thing to help me with my triggers is I feel like I plan in my business world and my work, and then I just don't plan enough on my personal life. And I don't sl stop and slow down for me. Um, and so like definitely going into the weekends and just having a better plan and remembering, because this happened over the weekend, um, where I thought I could go a couple hours without eating. And so making sure that I eat every two to three hours so that hunger doesn't arise and set and that trigger sets off that I just I'll eat what, whatever's in front of me. So just continue to use all these strategies and, and definitely plan, plan for this wild spirit of mine. <laughs> okay. So I think one of my biggest triggers is um, frustration and it's just a lot of times happens at work like, um, I don't know, just sitting at my desk and you know how having business, you got a lot of cash flow and then sales slow down. And then it's like, where's all my freaking money, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go eat lunch. And then, you know, it's just that type of thing. Or the guys are having break time and you just go sit down and, you know, I don't know, whatever they're having. Um, sit there and just munch and um, it's just a lot of for me was I, I was just doing a lot of snacking um, and so my thing is for when those things happen like if the frustration comes just get up and go walk down the hallway and drink my water and and do stuff like that one of the, another thing was I think part of the reason I I'm had such success in, in shedding all this weight right away is I was, I loved white chocolate mocha every morning. I stop and get me a white, white chocolate mocha. And so no sugar for two weeks. And um, my body is loving it. No sugar. So, um, and, you know, a honey bun, eh, that was pretty good. So just, I had a lot of those little bad habits that accumulated over the years. And so, and then adding that frustration on top and then eating out of frustration. And, um, and then I find, I, I didn't know I was such a snacker walking by just, Oh, there's a piece of something, something and eating it. And, you know, I, I was like last night, Super Bowl, there's, I walked by and there's like um, my daughter had made some uh, potato wedges. Holy smokes, they look good. And I'm walking by. Nope, there's veggies. So, you know, that kind of stuff. I find myself wanting to snack a lot. And so just being focused and trying not to snack and just grabbing my bottle, bottle of water instead of snacking. So this week... As you guys are coming into this next week, it's really focusing on starting to recognize what have these triggers been? Where have these controlled me? And as you start to recognize them, starting to take your control back. And for so many of you, this is going to be such a huge week because when you think about emotional eating, when you think about how long we've been going around this circle with all these triggers, all these emotions, and we didn't even realize why. And so for some of you, this is going to be one of the most powerful foundational weeks of the entire program. And I can't wait to see uh, how you build your playbook, how you begin to build your list, and how you're going to get around it moving forward.